discover that there were these gaps in her knowledge. And I just want to rattle off a couple of the things that insiders say she just simply didn't know. Uh, there were real problems with basic civics, government structures, municipal, state, and federal government responsibilities. She didn't know the, the nations involved in the North American Free Trade Agreement, we're told. Those, of course, being the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. NAFTA, a major campaign issue, that would have been something of a deficit. We're told that she, didn't actually, she wasn't actually able to name all the countries in North America as part of that debate. And she didn't understand, McCain aides told me today, that Africa was a continent and not a country, and actually asked them that. They argue, they say, if South, Amer South Africa wasn't just part of the country as opposed to a country in the continent. They go on to say that she didn't understand the idea of American exceptionalism, a classic principle of Wilsonian doctrine that says that the United States is exceptional in the world and has therefore a very special role in leading the globe. Yeah, All of these things right. caused great doubts. Okay, so great her doubts, frame of Bill. reference in history and geography and current events was weak according to your sources and so that but she can be tutored i mean a woman's not a stupid woman um, that's right you you can and tutor people and you can get people up to speed on the basics of here's the government here's the exceptionalism that right. we're talking about here's the world map here's our interaction so it's got to be more than that go well, one of the things that happened was she took a little bit of interview preparation before the Charlie Gibson ABC News interview, and by most accounts that went fairly well, although she was left a little bit irritated by some of the questions in the general reporting of that interview. But then the Katie Couric interview came, and for that she refused interview preparation. It didn't go well, and she blamed ostensibly Nicole Wallace, a senior advisor who had in fact worked for CBS with Katie Couric and had organized some of that interview, and then the rift began to really sort of right, unfold. But let's get Pacific that here. refusal of debate prep caused some problems. All right, so she didn't want to be uh, bogged down with a lesson before Ms. Couric talked to her. And then she goes in to talk to Couric, and it doesn't go well. What does that mean? I mean, what, what was no. the big deficit of the interview? Well, in fact, McCain aides will argue that there were no unfair questions from Katie Couric, though the reporting of the interview might have been snarky and an example of sort and of mainstream was. media beating up on a Republican conservative and a woman. Right. They argue that the questions from Couric on the merits weren't unfair. Well, afterwards, Palin began to attack staff and suggest that she was mishandled and communicated that to a handful of people both in the McCain-Palin campaign and outside. What was and her then beef? What was the her real beef? back and forth began. Okay, what was her beef that, that she, she was mishandled? That she shouldn't have been... Well, that she hadn't been warned, that she hadn't been steered to opportunities where there might have been more friendly audiences. And mostly, she said she wanted to get out on the campaign trail and speak and defend herself. That was something that the campaign was deathly afraid that she wasn't prepared to do, so there was resistance. Well, that's now, what there are other anecdotes, me. Bill. That's what happened with me. Well, I, listen, I talked to her on the phone. She wanted to do the interview, and then the McCain people wouldn't put her out there alone. The senator had to sit next to her, and, that's that, right. and, and logistically, we just couldn't pull it off. Okay, so all of this now makes perfect sense up to, say, a week ago. Then there were reports that Sarah Palin herself, under the pressure, and she was under enormous pressure, started to crack. Is that true? Yeah. There are stories that say she would look at her press clippings in the morning and throw what has been described to me as tantrums. The way I understand it, there were times when she would be so nasty and angry uh, at staff that they would virtually be reduced to tears. There was the throwing of paperwork and things of this nature. And a whole series of descriptions, anecdotes all from the McCain campaign and other insiders' side of it, that suggest a certain level of performance that they were caught off guard by. One of the more infamous stories that's now come out is there was a time when McCain staffers went to collect her at her hotel room and she had just stepped out of the shower and essentially met them wrapped in a bathrobe. They were taken aback by that, found it uh, rather uncommon. They have suggested that she's a bit of a shopaholic and that on more than one occasion she would go out and buy clothes that to many seemed unnecessary because the campaign had already provided her with a very large wardrobe, uh, a wardrobe that famously rang up a bill of about $150,000, mostly because they bought extra sizes to make sure everything fit, but the aides say she took a lot of extra clothes. That sounds and like $20,000 in clothes though, you know? went to Todd Palin. Yeah, that sounds like nitpicking. It, oh, listen. There's a lot of backbiting that's going on yeah. here, not just between the McCain staff and Palin, but also within the McCain staff. And last week, Randy Schooneman, the former foreign policy advisor for the McCain campaign, was fired 
for allegedly leaking some of the backbiting about Palin. He is reported to have been a real Palin fan and didn't like the fact that they were nailing her and talking behind her back. He put it in the newspapers, and for that, he was fired. Well, at the last minute, the McCain campaign and Senator McCain himself said, let's not make it public, let's keep it quiet. That's not the kind of message that they want. He had been under fire for a chaotic campaign that was often sort of contradicting itself and wrapped up in this type of pettiness. It was almost omnipresent in the staff in the final week, notwithstanding Senator McCain's yeah. campaigning, barnstorming at a frenzied pace around the country. Yep, this certainly. was something that the campaign staff says was unprecedented. Well, it certainly doesn't sound like a great situation. I'm sure there's a book in it for somebody. Hey, Carl, we appreciate the good reporting. Thanks very much. In a moment.